have you here on the program. Thank you. Good yeah. to be here. Uh, it, it's quite <coughs> interesting bringing up a story about, um, uh, and I know this is not your this is not your field of, of of expertise or what you're looking at as well. But you know, we're talking about three uh, apartheid era. Uh, uh, individuals that may be up for parole today and a nation that's sitting on tenterhooks thinking, goodness me, is this where we're at right now, that they're going to be let back into society? I mean, we talk about a rainbow nation. Is that forgiving something we should, we should take into our hearts? Well, I think uh, <coughs> you, you you'd, uh, recall that the, our transition uh, was not an easy one. And, and, and part of what made us to start constructing a united nation uh, was through, amongst others, reconciliation in, in our society, um, without referring to specific uh, matters relating to the paroles and so on. But the fact of the matter is that reconciliation has played a key role uh, in ensuring that uh, our conflictual past is dealt with. We wouldn't have reached the point we, we reached in, in the, in, in 1994, if uh, we had not chosen this path, because neither of the of the, of the parties had succeeded to obliterate the other, uh, the apartheid uh, system on the one hand and the liberation movement. So um, the negotiations uh, path then became uh, the main area or, or, and, and, and the theatre of our moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see what happens this afternoon. But something else we need to talk about, and we talk about the social cohesion here in, uh, in, in South Africa. And there, there are two issues I want to address here. And let's start off with uh, what we saw in, in Soweto and other townships around the country. Um, looting, some saying that it has nothing to do with xenophobia, others saying it's mere criminality. But I think the nation is divided. Now, what is it, in your opinion? Obviously, I, I imagine it's a bit of both and, and some campaigns to develop um, a way forward, to get away from all of this. Well, on, on both uh, instances, let me say that uh, our task um, as a society, and we must not lose sight of the bigger picture, is the unity of our people. Yeah. Um, whatever their backgrounds, uh, we, we've got to ensure that we unite our society and do all those things which need to be done, forging partnerships and so on. Relating to specific matters, you will from time to time uh, come across certain instances uh, of discrimination and intolerances of whatever nature, uh, be they uh, racism, xenophobia. Actually, if you look at uh, what happened recently, um, we need to dissect it uh, properly because you do have elements of criminality in some of the instances, uh, but you also have sentiments uh, which uh, are anti-foreign, which have to be dealt with. Uh, and, and these anti-foreign sentiments are very much directed to Africans. Uh, they have nothing to do with the other people. Uh, mm. Of course now you have uh, uh, people uh, of Asian origin and so on, but human beings and humanity uh, will only survive if we are able to coexist uh, and ensure that whatever um, our differences are dealt with, confronted. That is why we emphasize more dialogues as we have been coming to, uh, coming from a number of community interaction and conversation with our people because the construction of a united South Africa, a non-racial and non-sexist South Africa, is ongoing. Uh, it started only 20 years. 20 years uh, is not uh, uh, much. Mm. If you come to look at the issue of discrimination, you start with the problem of color line, for instance. Even the uh, developed nations are still grappling with that, even today. So it's an ongoing task 
for all of us to yeah. uh, make our contribution. Indeed, it takes, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort from absolutely everyone involved. Now, you and I, Orfea, were talking about a story that uh, maybe if you, you don't live in the area, they haven't heard about it, but there's a particular school, it's called the Cura Foundation in Ruderplatt. Now, there's a story that's come out here uh, where some classes are made up exclusively of either white or black children. The response, and I'll, I'll read it verbatim, from um, an in, uh, a Cura Holdings is Andre Pollard. He denied any racial segregation, stating that the different races were kept apart as a way of ensuring that children made friends with others who shared their culture and didn't feel isolated. He could have really just ended that sentence with one word, apartheid. I mean, that, that is in a nutshell what this is. I mean, this is not what we can do to our children, surely? Absolutely. You know, as a nation, there are things we need to be able to tolerate. And there are things we need to be intolerant about. There is no way that uh, at this time and age we can tolerate something like this. Fervoud would have said this. Uh, as you are reading what you are reading, yeah. uh, I hear Fervoud uh, in the background. So therefore, society has to say no to such uh, activities. In fact, if people are allowed to do what this gentleman we are talking about is doing, it, it will undermine the very values uh, and principles enshrined in our constitution. This is apartheid, whatever name she would call it, and, and society has to uh, stand against this uh, so that uh, the people concerned are made to understand that society is not going to, we can't have a democratic South Africa and have such people with, with such uh, views uh, yeah. very distorted. Yeah. Minister, very quickly, I, I need to get this question in. I know we're running late, but it is, it is part of the news. Um, we started off by talking about this in the interview, that about uh, the parole that's going to be happening, the announcement today. Do you think the decision could further segregate South Africa? Do you think that uh, the reaction is going to cause a massive outcry in either direction? Well, it, it will depend where you stand uh, on these matters. Um, but I think that uh, I have all the... I do not want to get into the details because uh, the Minister of Justice uh, would be dealing with, with the matter, uh, as it were. Um, the issue about the reaction of the people in this country would really be a matter, of, would, would be a subjective matter uh, as to where you come from. What, what is your view insofar as moving society forward? Um, the department has, has done a lot of things. Uh, there are people who have been released in the past uh, and they uh, some in society have been alarmed about that and so on. But uh, I think that uh, from the point of view of government, uh, the department would be able to know exactly what the feeling. Because you see here, you have a lot of players. You have uh, families uh, of, of victims. You have uh, those who support uh, the offender. And I understand that there's been a process of interacting with, with the two. Yeah. Without, as I said, without getting into details, the minister would be in a better position to yeah, deal with that. to elaborate on that. Yeah. But I suppose calling for South Africans to abide by and accept whatever decision Absolutely. is made today, I think, is the, is the big thing. Absolutely. Minister, thank you for talking to us about these very, very important issues and issues that we need to continuously talk about here in South Africa. That of segregation, whether it be between um, ourselves, a, a colour one, a xenophobic one, something that we certainly need to, we need to address on, 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 a, on numerous occasions. Minister, thanks for joining us here on the programme. Uh, the Minister of Arts and Culture, Nati Mtetwa.